Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and welcome to this lesson on glazed putty. Now, what glazed putty is, it may be called glazed putty, finished glaze, basically the same thing, but it's a kind of like a body filler, but it's a thinner material. It's not meant to be applied as thick, and it's, it's thinner, and it sands much easier. The disadvantage of, of putty is that it's a lot more expensive than your regular body filler. Another benefit of glaze is it can be applied over your sanded paint. Uh, most uh, technical data sheets said it, it says that it needs to be sanded with at least 180, so 180 grit or coarser, you know, this can be applied over. But the reason I really like to use glaze putty is because it can go over your sanded paint, primer, all those different layers that uh, you can feel after you had feather edged, and it can go over your body filler and metal. So this makes it ideal to go over the entire area. And rather than fighting those different rings, those different layers of coating, and uh, trying to get those where you can't see them at all, after you go over with the glaze and block it out, you don't have that issue. So it really saves on a lot of primer and blocking. And even though putty is a little bit higher than body filler, primer is still more expensive than the putty is. So I like to use it just as a skim coat after all my body work is done. Plus, if I had a few pinholes, a few imperfections, a few minor low areas, you know, it's going to fix all that too. Now, in this video, I'm going to use the a 3M system. It's a 3M dynamic system, and uh, they have different cartridges. And these cartridges, you can get body filler, you can get this glaze, you can get fiberglass filler, and they now also even have their seam sealers and panel bond plastic repair. They can all come in these cartridges which you know, makes it pretty cool to, you know, if you have this dynamic mixing system. But the same rules apply if you're mixing your glaze. I mean, it works just as well, but you do need to mix it and uh, apply it. The benefit of this gun is it mixes all inside the cartridge for you. Uh, this is a two-part 2K product that we're using here. They also make a one-part putty. That's what we used to use a long time ago, and I think they still make it, uh, but it, you know, I think it still is available but I would recommend getting a two-part putty. It just works much better, and you don't get the shrinking that we used to get with the one-part putties. So now, we're gonna apply the putty, we're gonna block sand it, we're gonna finish it out in 150, because that's where the P pages in the estimating guide, Mitchell estimating guide, cuts it off. That's where they cut it from being the body technician's uh, job, and then it goes on to the paint shop. So we're gonna finish it out in 150. Again, uh, like I've talked about in the last video, uh, you may prefer to finish it off finer, and a lot of people do. Some people will finish off their body work in a 180 or even 220. So that's just preference. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now we're ready to apply the putty glaze. And uh, this works real well because I'm going to put it over everything sanded with the 150 over the different paint layers, over the metal and body fill. And this works great because it, you know, it levels all those surfaces where you don't feel the different layers of paint and primer and body filler and all that. So it works great for that. Now I'm going to put this on the uh, same way I would any other type of filler. Uh, whether you mix it, uh, you know, or this system, it'd be the same. But I'm going to apply it using a tight coat where I push down real hard. And I'm putting a lot of pressure on the uh, spreader here. And then I'm going to, followed by that, I'm going to use a fill coat where I let up. Now, I'm not putting this on real thick. I'm not really trying to, uh, you shouldn't have any lows at this point. Uh, this is more just for maybe pinholes, real minor things, the layers of paint to help level all that. But I do want to cover the entire surface. If you have a spot where you, you missed, uh, you didn't get a little bit of the, the putty in a certain area, it really makes it more difficult when you're sanding because you got to uh, feather that entire area around that did not get covered. So make sure everything is covered. Now, another thing whenever uh, applying, make sure you don't get trash in it right there. You see I got some. If you do, get it out because you don't want to leave those drag marks in there like you can get from trash because that's just going to cause a lot more work for you when you go to sanding. So you'll basically have to sand all that out and feather around that area. So make sure I use a new spreader on these final coats just to make sure I don't have those marks. Because usually if you drag a piece of trash down the whole area, you know, you can have to sand down to the bottom of that. Another thing I'm doing here is I, I kind of feathered in the edges of the putty. And uh, this will really reduce the amount of sanding I have to do when I try to feather the, 
the edges in. Now I allowed that to dry and with putty you want, don't, really don't want to try to sand it in the green state like I talked about in the body filler uh, stages. I'm going to let it fully dry and then I'm going to cross sand uh, using 80 grit to start with. But Notice with the, this block I'm not going way out past the edges trying to, to feather the edges in yet because I don't want 80 grit scratches all in the paint surface. Once it feels level you don't want to sand too much off just enough to get it level and then I'm going to switch to 150 grit and then I can start cross sanding the edges making sure that they're feathered into the paint correctly. So before I, I do that I'm going to apply some guide coat. Now this is a spray guide coat. There's also a dry form. This helps identify lows or any pinholes or you know any types of problems that may be there. So I'm going to spray that on before I continue blocking. And now I'm going to switch to the 150 grit and still using that cross sanding motion. Notice there is some guide coat left there. That's what it's, it's doing. It's doing its job. It's identifying itself. Uh, so I know there's something there. Now it may sand out, but I don't want to sit there and try to dig that out or make sure that I sand that out because that might uh, actually sand a low in that area. I'm just going to continue sanding, keeping the block flat, level, and sanding in cross motion, feather edging my edges in here. So I'm working on the edges, and if it sounds, sands out in the process, which it did on this one, then fine. And if it didn't, you know, leave it there because you're probably going to have to add some more to get that out. So now I'm just continuing going around making sure all the, the edges make a, you know, are smooth, make a smooth transition to the paint surface. Check your progress uh, often. Use the flat of your hand just to make sure everything's, you know, going the way that you want it to go. Uh, you'd be surprised what you think you can see sometimes, but when you feel it, you know, that's where you can really feel if there's a, a wave or something that you need to sand out. Another tip, be sure and always uh, keep your block clean. It'll make the sandpaper last a lot longer. It's like there I was using a scuff pad. You know, every once in a while you need to, to hit it, the sandpaper, with a scuff pad and that'll clean the, the product off the putty coat. So anyway, once it feels good, it's sanded out with 150, your edges feel smooth, now you're ready to move on to the priming stages. Okay, that covers this lesson on glaze putty. Now we, uh, in the first video, we showed you how to repair the dent, then how to apply and sand body filler, and now how to apply and sand the uh, putty. Now the repair is finished out in 150, it all feels good, it feathers into the paint good, there's no edges, you can't feel any uh, you can't feel any highs or lows. And traditionally, that's where the body shop ends and the paint shop begins from that point. Now, every shop does things a little bit different. Uh, some may have the body guy do a little more or a little less, and the paint shop do more or less. Uh, that's not nothing set in stone, but that's just kind of an idea and kind of going by those P pages to make that dividing line of what's body shop and what's paint. But there's really nothing, no wrong way or right way, uh, you know, as long as the job's being done right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on putty, and if you did, be sure and go down here and give us a like. Leave us a comment. Tell us how you do it. Do you work at a shop? Uh, where does the body shop responsibilities end at your shop? And where does the painting steps begin? I know there's a variety of ways. I always like learning new things from, from you, the YouTube. I learn a lot as well from these videos because y'all leave me a lot of useful feedback and comments and things for me to think about and I really appreciate that. So be sure and leave us a comment. You know Whether you have a, a suggestion, the way you do it, the way your shop does it, or if you have questions, you know, maybe you're, you're doing a car at your, at your shop or at your garage and you have some questions about this, feel free to leave us a question, comment, suggestion, because we can all learn from each other. And remember, if something's worth doing, do your best and have a blast doing it. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you in the next video.